Basque Legion. We are in for a video because another Last Respects user has entered the chat. And that's where things get insane because the Houndstone Revival Blessing strategy is one of the most complex and awesome in all of Pokemon. You gotta watch my videos about it. This is like the only strategy in Pokemon that I've ever seen where you actually have a theoretical 99% win condition. You just need to find it. You need to get on that thread and you need to play perfectly to preserve the win condition. And if done correctly, there really isn't a battle or team composition you can lose against. And it gets even more complex. Like you can just do Palmot, Tyrantar, Houndstone and like win every game. If you make like another three Pokemon to use that might just like ignore running the Last Respects Houndstone and then also play into like different team comps and go Galaxy Brain 12D Chess Grandmaster. But can Bascu Legion do it better? So we have two to three main differences. Swift Swim instead of the Sand Rush. We also have an extra typing so we can just get more damage if we can't use the Last Respects which can be helpful. And then the stats. So it's mostly going to be about the offensive stats, 112.78 versus 101.68. Basque Legion hits harder and is faster, which is pretty important when it comes to sweeping. And then the bulk gets kind of weird, because like 120 hit points, less defenses. Less hit points, high defenses. So it kind of like averages out, which means you get more stats to play with on the Basque Legion, but it means you're also locked into the Swift Swim. Thing about Houndstone is Tyranitar is an absolute monster. If you play Bulk Tyranitar, you just can even like KO Pokemon and make it to where Houndstone is in a 1v2 scenario at the end, or remove Houndstone's biggest threats really easily. And then like the Revival Blessing on Tyranitar means a big threat Pokemon comes in again. And if you're running like Bulky Tyranitar, because why does like max hit points, some attack investment, and then like some defense into an assault vest? And then you can terrestrialize your Tyranitar if you need to. Also, you do want to go like Terra Ghost Houndstone for the big, big damage. But if you need to, you can just kind of like run this. And that's a three hit KO. So if it gets revived, it can take a hit and then deal a hit back. And then just be a problem for the opposing team. So like Tyranitar, very, very strong. What about Drizzle Pokemon? Well, Drizzle, kind of in an awkward situation. Let's go and pull that up. We got Pelipper. That's it. You can only run the Pelipper for the instant drizzle, and it's not, like, as nuts of a Pokemon. You can do, like, Tailwind and Focus Sash, and then, like, try to get some water damage, but it, it's not the heavy damage kind of Pokemon that we expect with something like the Tyranitar. So your support is going to be worse, but your carry is going to be better. Also, we can, like, go into the deeper damage calculation. So the funny thing is... I just ran Houndstone, and because I started the strat in Series 1, I didn't really consider, like, how it's going to interact with the legendary Pokemon, you know, the cursed objects or whatever, as well as the Paradox Pokemon. So, I just kind of did, like, arbitrary speed and arbitrary distribution on that, and you can still run Adamant Nature. But yeah, like, 204 speed, Adamant gets you to a really high speed tier, and then it, like, creeps on top of the creep, and you just get to outspeed everything unless it's like a booster energy speed on the flutter main or the iron bundle but then it has no offensive pressure so you're probably fine and just like a lot of like crazy interactions going on with this so yeah like you can just get a fast enough houndstone and then you can play around and tinker with those numbers and just get like some extra bulk and some fun stuff so for basket legion you can just do it with less and then find some extra stats and then you just have more attack even on adamant at the end of the day so you can just kind of pull it together. What about support though? Because my initial thought is like Houndstone is just better and might still be just better, especially because Ghost also doesn't open up extra weaknesses and that could maybe be the problem. So we're, we're going to have to see when this Pokemon lands and when we finally get rule set D and then like it all comes together and if people can make it work. But also what about alternative Pokemon? I'm thinking Basque Legion versus Houndstone just straight up on like the weather setting users it's just kind of like Basque Legion loses and Houndstone's still the goat but maybe you can just like build a rain setter prankster Pokemon that just actually makes it better and like maybe you could even do this the other way around to where like oh this with Sandstorm also causes Houndstone to carry more effectively or maybe can be splashed in in situations where Tyrantar is very unfavorable into the opponent 
opponent's team or opponent's potential three pick, and then the game gets even more crazy. But like my thoughts here on Rain Dance is like you have complete control. You can Thunder Wave the opponent's Iron Bundle or initially faster Pokemon because the speed is mostly about the Palmot. If Palmot gets like outsped one shot because Electric Fighting has a good amount of weaknesses, that could just be GG right there. And then like you can actually function a Houndstone because Revival Bless or not Revival Blessing, Last Respects gets 150 power. And then you're still Life Orb and you can Terror Ghost into that. And you're pretty much trying to like fish for the extra revivals, but it goes very bad if like Palmot ends up just getting KO'd or doesn't have like the proper chances to revival blessing. So I mean, like, yeah, you can actually set this up with the cleft keywords like you Thunder Wave the fast Pokemon, you can set spikes which breaks Sash, which is also a problem for like one shotting on the last last respects. And then you can just like foul play chip, which can also do something to focus sash or just have like threat onto the opponent. Uh this could get awkward if the opponent's just like, oh, I see your cleft key. It's going to be like all status or mostly status. I'm just going to set up like calm mines on it or bulk ups or iron defenses or something. So maybe that gets bad, but also could be like you could just bring in enough threat and sack off Pokemon, revive them, and then still set up to where it's like Houndstone will eventually get those KOs and it will eventually sweep unless the opponent is going pure iron defenses. So actually that's kind of the thing. Like foul play is good against Swords Dance, not iron defense. You don't have a lot of ways of shutting them down, like Torment might not be fast enough. Side note, Game Freak removing Toxic on every Pokemon has shown to be a horrible decision that has just made more bulky setup possible instead of removing it by removing like Toxic on stall Pokemon. And I think that can be shown here where like if Klefki had the Toxic, it could just shut that Pokemon down and just wait until Basket Legion gets in. And yeah, like, this does lack the damage, whereas if opponent's trying to set up in Tyrantar, and Tyrantar's drilling it with super effective moves, then could be better for the for your team if you're running the Houndstone or something. Um, I don't know, like, how do you how do you mix this up? Like, what if you just try to go Calm Mind, Draining Kiss, Klefki into certain compositions? Like, while they're setting up, you're setting up, you can tank a hit, and then, like, hit them with big Draining Kiss, like, oh, Klefki becomes a mini pseudo-carry, and then when it eventually goes down, Palmot comes in, Revival Blessing, switch into Clef Key, get your Rain Dance, if it's a safe switch. If not, you sack Palmot, Rain Dance, you have three KOs, Last Respects is at 400 damage, and then you pop off and you do the Last Respect things, and then we've seen from the videos, again, you need to watch all the Houndstone videos, there's even, like, some more recent ones as well, this one, uh, you just, you just, like, pilot the strategy and it's absolutely insane, so it's kind of like finding the way of making that work. I was thinking like, oh, what about Light Screen Reflect because that's very supportive on the Clef Key and then some kind of other move, Thunder Wave. Again, like, there's so much setup in the game that they get the download on this. You really can't threaten them in any, any way and then, like, you switch Palmot and then, like, you Double Shock and you Nuzzle them and... Actually, no, that's what the Encore's for. Never mind. That act... It's, it's one of those things like, okay, you Encore a Pokemon that's Iron Defensing. It doesn't get to play the game, but you also don't get to do anything to it and that... That gets kind of awkward until you get enough KOs, enough damage on the Houndstone to make it matter. It's like, yeah, the Encore on Palmot is that extra tech. And then it, get, it gets kind of complicated into how you pilot and set that up. But against a more offensive team, you want the Light Screen, you want the Reflect. And then Palmot can Revival Blessing when Clef Key finally goes down. And then you switch in the Clef Key. And then, like, Clef Key can go down again. And then Palmot Revival Blessings again. And then Clef Key comes back up. And it's got Pranks to Rain Dance, so it doesn't matter. Then your last respects on the Basket Legion is fully stacked at 250. And depending on how you dance around the rotation, you might have that extra, like, turn of Reflect or Light Screen. And because we're getting all the, like, bonus stats, we can go Light Clay. And the trick about this one is, like, you don't need and you don't want the Damp Rock. We learned this with Tyranitar. That Tyranitar with Houndstone, if you actually have the Smooth Stone, it can just get to where, like, by the time you're done Revival Cycling and Houndstone comes in, you didn't refresh the sand, so now you just have like one turn and then you get bodied. So you need to keep as much speed as possible for this Pokemon. And with Light Clay, it kind of doesn't matter because like, yeah, you, Light Screen Flex stays up, Palma does a thing, finds a way to stay alive. Klefki just like keeps surviving and keeps landing. And then you get that guaranteed rain set where it's like, okay, whatever happened, Klefki gets revived, Palma goes down, and then you have pranks to rain dance and the opponent can't respond to it. So, you rain dance, get KO'd, ready to sweep. It just feels like one of those weird things where if the opponent reads it 
and ignores you, there might be a line of play out for them. And then, like, it could get sketchy, which is why I'm just saying, like, hey, make it uncomfortable on the spikes, foul play. And then the Thunder Wave is going to keep your Palmot in that, like, where it can keep reviving. And eventually, Basket Legion is coming in, and it's strong enough. Also, the benefit is Waterfall gets bonus damage. It has Stab, and it's also going to be raining, so you're getting even more damage on top of that. And that's when, like, Waterfall just finds neutral KOs, regardless of the state of last respects. Um, puts us into a weird situation for coverage. Water Ghost. Niche Dark-type Pokemon just kind of wall us out a bit. And unfortunately, Ice doesn't cure all of the problems. But it's really only like Hisuian Sam Samurott. I'm assuming Greninja is going to be coming into Rule Set D as well. So you have that. All right, like hopefully not too much of a problem but also when you look at these pokemon are pretty frail so you can just neutrally one or not even neutral resisted one shot them with the ghost last respects that's all pumped up and stuff as well as having the outspeeds against them and i guess because you're pretty much always terra ghosting with this strategy except in like the rare situations where you want to go electric palmot and then just drill an opponent with revival blessings if it's something like a corviknight then actually you don't have the water weakness, so that's not as much of a drawback, and it's a raw strength. So yeah, like, you can make this work. I just think it, it's just different. And I think we're going to have to see how it plays out, how it works into the meta. Or maybe you could just be funny. Maybe you could have both on your team. And you could just, again, have a 100% theoretical win rate by just having both uh, last respect strategies at the same time, a random six Pokemon that doesn't do anything, and then you just kind of run what you think is more necessary. If the opponent has a more offensive team, the range strat's going to succeed. If the opponent has a more defensive team, then that's when you can kind of use Houndstone with utility and then bring more bruisery, bulky, immediate pressure on the Tyranitar and then make it harder for the opponent to set up. Now, that also means you can run a slightly different Tyranitar with Taunt. That way, like, the opponent is not setting up against you whatsoever. Uh, it means you can't run the Assault Vest, so you will have to find, like, a different defensive item. Like, Leftovers might keep you around enough, especially if you like the Revival Blessing and playing around with that. Uh, it cuts down on your coverage, but it doesn't mean, like, just offensive, spooky, breakdown Tyranitar if you kind of see that potential setup on their team. And if you don't, then you just run the Clef Key, Basket Legion, and you win anyways. So that could just get, like, extra cool and extra crazy. And it just keeps making me more and more sad that there's still no battle replays. How are there no battle replays? The greatest feature of Generation 7, for some reason not even introduced in Sword and Shield DLC, not finding its way into Generation 9, and no one cares about the game because of it, because there's no way like showing off your strats or showing off your big brain or doing anything cool and development, and even rental teams do nothing to accomplish that because it's all hacked Pokemon and it's all like mono lame strats as well. So, like, with this, I want to see what other people can do with this. I can't carry the burden of being the best Pokemon battler and having to do everything. It, it's, it, it, you can't. It's impossible. Which is why Fan Fridays was so awesome and battle replays are so great. But yeah, in summary, I think Houndstone is better than Basque Legion on the surface if you get really creative with the tech or find, like, something outside of an ability-setting Pokemon you might be able to take Basque Legion further. And then also, like, these other attributes could just become arbitrary. Now you become, like, unstoppable, become uncounterable. Maybe there's some weird priority things that might actually need to be covered for. But if not, like, dang, this, this is just kind of nasty, and I'm all for it. Now, I really want to say only play Last Respects because it's so beautiful and cerebral, especially in 3v3. But there's other ways of running Basque Legion as well. Like, we have adaptability. And we also just have nonsense. Game Freak. This has to be deliberate, right? To where Jolly Nature, plus one, so you go Scarf, outspeeds Dragapult. And you also get the adaptability. And you can, like, Terra on top of that, and just have, like, crazy amounts of damage as well. Why did this Pokemon get so many amazing abilities? Like, it even has Mold Breaker. I don't think it really does much with the Mold Breaker because you're not running a utility Basket Legion that's like, oh man, I can finally get through Garganassault and Golden Go. But, like, the adaptability has some workability around it as well. And you can still run the last respects. You just sack off two Pokemon, and, like, maybe this is where you have some weird stuff going on to where 
a utility screen setter can come in as your second Pokemon. Like, you just go all-out offensive on your first Pokemon, bring in utility for your second Pokemon, set it up for the Basket Legion, and again, now you're just, like, outspeeding practically everything. You still have considerable amounts of damage, and it's ignorant what this Pokemon does. Like, maybe that's what makes it better than Houndstone, in that, like, you don't even have... You can just invalidate how the game works. So, last respects, it's going to get plus two from your two fainted Pokemon. So, like, you're at 150. And then, max attack, jolly nature, adaptability, scarf item. We just KO Iron Bundle. And there's no play around it. And that's before we even go Terra Ghost. Do we even go Terra Ghost at that point? Because, like, the adaptability and the also, like, double stab scaling kind of drops off, like... That almost seems incorrect, but I guess that's just how it works when you're doing the adaptability with trying to go double stab Terra typing. I don't know. Um, this means that like you just crush neutral effective or not neutral resisted hits as well. However, you might want the water that way. If like you know there's a normal type somewhere on their team, you can go Terra Water, and then you have like adaptability lower base power moves that still do crazy amounts of damage. Oh, adaptability cuts a lot of damage, and that's because it just counts your type. Much like how if you Terra off of a type, you lose that typing's benefits. Like if you go from Tyranitar's rock typing into just like a non-rock type terrestrialization, you now lose your special defense bonus and you become vulnerable to Sandstorm. So I guess like adaptability works the same way, which makes sense. So you don't get like triple stab, triple adaptability. And I think that's also a case for not having the ghost because yeah, it means like if you need to peel off the ghost, and then funnel all of that power elsewhere, you can. Wow. But then you just somehow have no damage. Terra Water. Yeah, see, like, the water adaptability interaction actually just doesn't give you much. So you could even do something like a random Terra Blast, where it's like Terra Blast into a different Terra type for all that adaptability boosting to find, like, two-hit KOs onto above-average bulk Pokemon. But technically, if you go water, you're also in a decent position because that waterfall flinch is no joke so you get like the terror water waterfall flinch 20 percent chance you two tap a pokemon for free because you're outspeeding everything 120 with this even though it's low defenses is still like enough natural bulk to be survivable it's like you're two at ko pokemon and if you're two at KOing everything faster you're one for one plus with the terror water and again, the damage calculations don't change too much off of the Terra Ghost with the Powered Up Last Respects. I guess it's going to come down to practice. Like, if you have Terra Water and your Last Respects ain't doing it in some situations against, like, very bulky or resistive Pokemon, maybe just all in on the Last Respects. Or again, you change your team composition to really build into that. And I mean, like, even then, like, you could still have the Rain Dance adaptability for the Waterfall, but at that point, again, like, Swift Swim just feels better because then you can like change up your items and get more damage from the item that way and still have like extra speed like you just get more more stats with the swift swim than the adaptability we talked about the coverage a little bit you get a couple extra things like the psychic fangs you can crunch you can zid headbutt uh wave crash i think puts too much recoil on you unless like for this move set if you just need to finish off like one last pokemon you need to make sure you have the damage yeah, fine, you outspeed them and you one-shot them on a wave crash with adaptability. Maybe Terror Water, maybe not. And then GG. Like, if it's a, if it creates the GG scenario, it's perfectly fine to run. So it would be wave crash and the waterfall. And, like, you just, you just tech shenanigans and make the opponent feel like everything is out to get them. Boom. Just like that. This Pokemon's actually going to be nasty. And I think the extra speed and extra damage means you get that brainless fear that people initially had with the Houndstone, where it's just like, yeah, you lose two Pokemon, Basket Legion just, just kind of wins. And they don't have to put in work for it. Whereas with Houndstone, you actually have to put in the work to maybe get a higher percent win condition, but maybe just this just wins if you just kind of set it up with the right utility and just like bulk it. Like again, you just play to sack. You just sack off your first two Pokemon, just prevent the opponent from setting up into a bad game state, make them weak enough, and Basket Legion wins. And it's going to be easy. So, there we go, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this. I hate saying it, because, like, Pokemon Legends is trash. It's hard to find anything redeeming about 99% of that game, but Basket Legion's actually, like, a cool design and cool lore. So, it is the 1%, and that means you probably should use it.
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.